I'm Courtney and welcome to my channel. If you haven't already watched it, feel free to check out my reading receipt video where I am down in Asheville, North Carolina for a long weekend, reading, exploring the area, checking out some bookstores and just living the dream. Also, I'm over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you wanna follow me there and find more bookish content that you won't find here. All right, we are entering the fall autumnal months which means a lot of cozy reads, some cozy environments. I have my candle going. This is going to be featured in my literary gifts video, I guess, since we're also thinking about giving gifts later in the season or later in winter, I guess, but it's very cozy. It is Pumpkin Pacey's. It is based off the Harry Potter series, of course, and it is cinnamon sugared pumpkin and it smells amazing. I wish smell o vision was a thing so you can experience it just like I am while I'm going to be going over these books today and I also have it while I'm working. I've been diving a lot more into reading challenges and like other like cool experiences hosted by other book bloggers and booktubers. I have just finished the Becca's book Opalathon or Bookopoly, which is based off the game Monopoly, which is super cool. I think I'm going to do that for my December reads as well. November is going to be all about nonfiction November, so I kind of already have a stack ready for that. But October is all about Spoopathon. So this is a readathon that happens every year, the whole month of October, and it's based off different prompts. So the Spoopathon, is, this year's theme is getting through a haunted house. So I'll put the graphic up here of what I'll be working with, and then I'll list below more of the details of the Spoopathon. So it's hosted by Spoopy Hall over on YouTube and Twitter, and I've joined a Discord channel as well to talk with fellow readers and everybody else that's trying to get through this haunted house, I guess. But it seems pretty cool. Like I love, it doesn't have to be like scary or autumnal or like thrillery books. I tried to throw some in there because I wanted to like embrace the season and not necessarily like scare the crap out of me, but like just get that adrenaline going a little bit more, flipping through the pages and everything, and then have some like nice thick classics in there too. So I have a good mix and yeah, we'll see if I say this all the time, if I'll get through all of them. Yeah, hopefully I'll have some reviews and do some fun autumnal pictures. I just picked up a board, this woman on, it's like a Cincinnati bloggers, Facebook group was selling a bunch of her props because she's moving on to something else or like doesn't need those anymore. And I got this really amazing board that I can't wait to do some great flat lay pictures with and some fun like bookish stacks and like have coffee and tea and uh, I'm just so excited. So maybe some of these books will be in that picture. It's probably going to be the announcement picture or the, the one I share on Instagram saying here, here's my, uh, my stack of books. So we'll see, be on the lookout for that, but let's get to the books. So the premise is you are trapped in a haunted house. The only way out is through reading prompts. So you follow one path of prompts to escape the house. As you gain points from completing prompts, we use them to defeat obstacles on the pathways out of the house. So that includes closed doors, ghosts, that kind of thing. And then you can choose a team to join that gives you special powers. And I joined the spoop shifters, which means if I don't like the path that I'm going on, vertically then I can shift over either diagonally or across I, I don't know if that's it's probably only one time I only chose one time in the the path that I'm going but that is my superpower or ability so let's start with a book with a black cover so I chose Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and this I'm really excited about I did see the series well the first season of Shadow and Bone on Netflix I don't even remember when that came out, a few months ago, earlier this year, I honestly don't remember. But I was more drawn to the Crows storyline way more than, like within the Grishaverse than the other folks. I don't even know their names. Um, I think Maul was one of the other guys. So I just love their story. This is the first of two, so it's a duology. I will probably read this one. And then if I get a chance to read Crooked Kingdom in the month of October, I'll go for it but at least getting this one done and then this is where I took the spoop shifters ability and moved diagonally across or through originally it was going to be a translated book and I moved over to an autumnal book or autumnal cover 
And I picked Arcadia by Lauren Groff. So this I picked up while I was in Asheville at Malaprops Books. And this was like right in the heart and like downtown aspect of Asheville. And just look at the cover. Like how can you get more autumnal than that? So this is a fiction read. Let me just read you the the description because I hadn't heard of this before. I've heard of Lauren Groff with Fates and Furies and then The Matrix. Then Matrix, not The Matrix. Matrix comes out, I think... By the time we're watching this, it would already come out or it's about to be coming out. And then I have Florida by her as well. But it says, in the 1970s, in the fields of western New York State, a few dozen idealists set out to live off the land, founding a commune centered on the grounds of a decaying mansion called Arcadia House. Arcadia follows this romantic utopian dream from its hopeful start through its heyday. Arcadia's inhabitants include Handy, the charismatic leader, his wife Astrid, a midwife, Abe, a master carpenter, Hannah, a baker and historian, and Abe and Hannah's only child, Bit. While Arcadia rises and falls, Bit, too, too, ages and changes. He falls in love with Helly, Handy's lovely troubled daughter, and eventually he must face the world Arcadia, face the world beyond Arcadia. So, yes, very excited about that and just really drawn to the cover. So at this point in the haunted house, I have reached a door that needs to be unlocked, which means I need a certain amount of points. And in order to get those points, I need to read a different book off the bonus list. So the bonus list, I chose a spooky book. I picked Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. This I picked up, I believe from Joseph Beth, I wanna say. And this was in my Cincy Bookstagrammers Instagram group. Someone had mentioned this because I've been getting more into like thrillers, psychological thrillers, murder mystery kind of stuff. And they recommended this author. And I've never heard of Alice Feeney before, never heard of this book. And I feel like this woman's like trapped inside her body and like doesn't know if she was in a coma or like how she's a arrived in this hospital. And she feels like, like nobody's really talking to her or telling her what was going on. Um, but she thinks her, either her husband or her sister, or maybe both had something to do with this. So interesting. And then we're back on the path with <laughs> this chunky book, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So this I am reading for, it's called a Tolstoy-a-thon, I think, or Tolstoy read-along uh, that I found on Instagram randomly. And this bookstagrammer is reading all the books Tolstoy has written and I chose to jump in in October for Anna Karenina because I haven't read this one yet. Have been sitting on my shelf for ages and I just read Anna Kay by Jenny Lee not too long ago and loved it, which like that's a contemporary edition or uh, retelling of the original, the classic Anna Karenina. So super chunky, super small font. And she it's great because she has, the bookstagrammer that's hosting this has like a whole breakdown of how many chapters or how many pages per day you're supposed to be reading so that I'm gonna try to live through <laughs> and this will probably take me the whole month to read and yeah what is what is happening with my life wow it's just like twice I need to book 500 plus pages it's almost it's 976 what am I doing? Next up is diversity or diverse representation. So I chose The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich and this I picked up, I believe when I was in Florida. Uh, I think this was Tom Bolo books if I remember correctly where I got this in Tampa or like St. Pete's area. So this was a Pulitzer Prize winning book which I, I hadn't really thought about like going after those kind of books before but I think this one was really unique because it details the Native American experience and I think that's so important and like critical for at least being in the United States and as we think about like Columbus Day and like Thanksgiving and all these holidays that we like have days off or whatever for having the like history behind how our country like started and the importance of those tribes and those peoples of the Americas is super, super important. So this is set in North Dakota in 1953, where I think like a really important bill is about to be passed or go through that affects the lands of the Native American tribes out there. So yeah, I am very intrigued by this and thinking a different kind of diverse representation that I like wouldn't immediately think of, but is so crucial to our country. All right, so this part of the path, I run into a ghost, which means I need some more points from the bonus list of prompts. And this was one I chose for a book that was recommended to me. So I chose In Cold Blood by Truven Capote, or Capote, 
don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but this was recommended to me by my friend Kyleen. She's really into like murder mystery, true crime, like all that stuff. I swear she's seen every series known on like regular basic channels and then like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, like anything you can think of, she's probably seen it. And if I send her something, it's funny. I am like, oh yeah, have you seen this or whatever? She's like, obviously. Um, so it's, it's kind of a running joke that she's like an expert on this kind of stuff. But she recommended this to me. She actually get this to me on my birthday last year. So hopefully I can get it read within 11 months of me being gifted this book. So yeah, this is also a true crime novel. Oh, this is actually even interesting too. It, it occurred, the crime occurred on November 15th, 1959. My birthday is the 16th many years later, but I'm like, wow, that, uh, very close to, like, I guess a day that's important to me, obviously, but interesting to see more about this crime and if they, I, mean, I don't know the history of it or if they catch the person in the end or what. So that's, what's kind of, that sounds sad, like exciting, which like crime and murder should not be exciting really. But I think just that satisfaction of someone being caught or like justice being served, closure, like that kind of stuff. And then the last prompt that everybody has to do regardless of where you started, what kind of abilities you have, etc., is a book to read after dark. So I chose If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And this is also the book selection for the Late Night Book Club on YouTube slash Instagram, Twitter, but they do a live show probably it's like for the month of October, but they'll probably do the live show early November if I had to guess. And I've been enjoying their shows so much. It's Noelle, Elias, and Joel. I'll, if I remember, I will put a link down below to their channel. Actually, well, it, they host it on each of their individual channels. So I'll just put it to one of the ones that I'd seen lately. I'd seen their Song of Achilles one, the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and then the other Black Girl is what they just did. And then this past month is Malibu Rising, and then this one, and I don't know what they have for November yet. I don't think they've announced it yet. But this, I think, will be exciting to read at night, in the dark, especially with uh, Daylight Savings happening, or I, actually, that doesn't happen until November, but it's, it, it's getting darker earlier. So I just saw something that, I think, eight o'clock, this is like the last time it'll be the sun will be up at eight o'clock or the sunset won't happen um after eight anymore which is so sad but more time to read and be spooked kind of i think this is a dark academia book based off like shakespearean either a story or like students who study shakespeare or something like that i guess it would make sense with the skull who knows so those are all the books for the spoopathon i love this doing like themed readathons. I know I've kind of fallen off hosting my own, but I love participating in everybody else's and seeing how creative they are, seeing what books other people will pick and like the community that is created from that. So I cannot be happier to be participating in this one for Spoopy Hall. But yes, that is all I have for you. Uh, like I mentioned, I'll most likely have like a literary gift giving video coming up next as, as we start to think about the holidays and just know that there are supply chain issues going on that might affect when your gifts or things are available or even if they are able to be produced before the the gift giving holiday season of whatever it is you celebrate in the winter months so just a note on that and i'll mention that again during the literary gift guide video <laughs> and those will be not books that I'll be recommending they'll be like journals and bookish things accessories I think are just nice for any bookworm in your life so get excited for that anyways thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up feel free to comment below your thoughts what readathons you're taking part in what you would pick for these prompts anything like that and then I'll be on lookout for the next video you can always hit the notification bell and know when i post next usually on mondays this past week i was I had a lot going on, so I was not able to put that up, but hopefully we'll be able to get two in before the month of September ends. So yes, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and happy reading.